Welcome to the Born Handy channel where we take on pretty much anything a handyman might be asked to do plus a little extra and today's a little extra is a tornado machine. Stick around because I'm going to show you how I made this torment. Stick around because I'm going to show you how I made this tornado machine and one that's a little bit more simple. Both of these can be made with materials that you can source from your local grocery store, hardware store, and hobby shop. Okay, so now I'm going to cut out our most basic tornado maker. Um, this is just black poster board. I bought this, I think, at an office supply store. It's not important. And I drew out my measurements on uh, using a white colored pencil to make it show up better. If you don't have a white colored pencil, any colored pencil should be fine. It's just easier to see. So I did use the white. The measurements are 28 inches high and 14 inches wide. So I'm going to make that cut first and go ahead and cut this down to 14 inches in width. Okay, the next thing is is that two inches up from the bottom and two inches down from the top I've drawn a line across and then three quarters of an inch in from the left and then another three quarters inch of an inch in from the left I've drawn two lines and that gives me a large slot and I'm going to go ahead and cut that slot out. These measurements are not exactly that important. They just have to be approximate. Anything you can design that would create a similar sort of uh, one-sided air feed will have the same effect. In fact, we could do this with three sides or even one curved piece with a few slots in it if we wanted to. Okay, and with that cut out, we need to join all the four pieces together, making sure that the slit is on the same side on every piece. Far right-hand side, far right-hand side. And on one of the pieces, it doesn't matter really the dimensions. Uh, in this case, I used a piece of cellophane and it's a little floppy, but you can see through it. You're going to want to cut yourself a window. You don't have to use cellophane. For example, you could have used this. This is just a piece of clear plastic that I took from a toy that we bought for one of my kids. And I could have used this, but it would have been a little small in this instance. So uh, I would, did go ahead and go with the cellophane. But you can buy this stuff in rolls at a lot of the big hobby stores. And the last one may be a little trickier. You're probably going to have to tape it on the outside, but it really does not matter for the purposes of what we're doing. And that is a completed tornado box. So now we just need to get a tornado inside. We're going to do that with a hot plate and a pot of boiling water. And now inside you can see a very basic vortex. The more violent the water boil, the better the vortex will be. The hot plate has got its limits in what it can do. But what if this just doesn't cut it and you wanted something a little bit more visual? This is a setup that I made a few months back. Um, I wanted something that was permanent that I could do these tornadoes with. This is made out of black PVC plastic, a piece of clear acrylic. I've used a spotlight that I got off of Amazon for around $20, a computer fan with a control knob that I got off of Amazon for around $15. And this allows me to dial in exactly what kind of vortex speeds that I want. I've got it set for mid speed right now. And this gives us a pretty visual representation of a tornado vortex but there's still a way to up your game a little further. Hey, Jacob, guess what we're about to do? Turn on the tornado machine. Is that the one? Yeah, we're going to make it tornado even more. There's just no substitute for dry ice in terms of fog creation. The warm water goes a long way. You don't need the hot plate. Uh, I am using the hot plate because it's here and because the dry ice will make the water cool enough that eventually it stops working and you'll have to change your water out. But so long as I have the hot plate, I can just keep adding dry ice and I can keep building a much more visual vortex each time. With the dry ice method, you don't necessarily have an updraft, so you are going to need a fan. The fan size doesn't really matter. What really does matter is the ability to tune the fan and get the speed somewhere you need it to be. This is a pretty easy project to take on. Uh, certainly most people don't have black PVC plastic laying around, but this could be made out of any kind of plywood type material, then you could paint black. 
The exact dimensions and sizes of the slits are not terribly important. What is important is that all the slots be on the same side. For example, in my unit, they're all on the left. And that way, when you generate your upward lift, you're gonna get spinning inside the box. Then it just matters about how much fog you can generate inside to make the vortex visible. This project was designed and laid out with kids in mind. This is a great project for educators or maybe a parent who is trying to nurture a child who has shown a lot of interest in science or, or maybe weather. And as I said in the video earlier, the, the exact measurements of this are not terribly important. I actually made another tornado tower out of the black cardboard that was only nine inches wide just to see if I could get a better vortex. The vortex was basically identical, but I, I did tend to have more fog ups of the window. But ultimately, the, the, it still made the vortex and it was still something that uh, somebody could see for relatively inexpensive. I think the cheaper of these two, I was able to build, even, even purchasing the hot plate, I was able to build for under $25. The more expensive obviously cost a lot more because of the materials that I used. But if you were to use uh, lesser materials, I see no reason you couldn't have built the more permanent tornado machine for around $150 uh, and, and a little, just a little bit of time. And I almost forgot to tell you where to get the dry ice, which in my case, I got it at a grocery store. Um, the Publix grocery store chains are pretty popular in the area where I live, and every single one of them has an area up toward the front of the store where they keep the dry ice. You're going to have to ask someone to get it for you. They generally don't want you to, t to handle it until you're out of the store with it, but they do typically keep it on hand, and it's not very expensive. I got the dry ice for this project for around $4.50. Something else I want to mention is that you, you need a light to shine down through the top and to shine only on the area where the fog is. You really don't want your light to shine on the back or the sides of the tornado box because it'll make the, the fog a little harder to see against the illuminated back. So in my case, I used a spotlight uh, permanently mounted in the permanent tornado box, but in the cardboard boxes, I just held a flashlight at the top and shined it down the bottom. These do work better in a dark room where you can illuminate only the fog, but you can still see them even if the room is uh, fairly well lit as so long as you've got a bright light shining down the top of the tornado box. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and more importantly, I hope this video found somebody who maybe was looking to do some sort of science project with kids that they might enjoy. So until next time, this is Jason and this is Born Handy. Whoa, cool tornado, huh?